Colossians chapter 3. Let's look at verse 1 through 3. The Bible says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on the things on the earth. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ. The Amplified Bible reads it this way. If then ye have been risen or raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead, aim at, seek the rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And set your mind and keep them set on what is above the higher things not on the things that are on the earth for as far as the world is concerned you have died and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God God wants us to seek those things which are above amen to seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God he wants us to set our affections on things out of, that are above and not on the things that are on the earth. He wants us to set our affections on the things of the kingdom of God. Set our affections on the cause of Christ. The cause of Christ. The cause of Christ. Someone say the cause of Christ. Come on, say it. The cause of Christ. God wants us to set our hearts on the causes of Christ. See, at some point in your Christian life, you got the purpose in your heart that you're going to be sold out. Hello, somebody. See, we have played games year after year after year after year. Saints have played games with God and, 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 and just wasted years and years and days and months. And just hope and waiting. Just, God, if I can just get over this hump in my life. But it all comes down to is a decision. A decision that you're going to honor, you're going to honor God. You're going to honor God. You're going to place high esteem on God. You're going to place high esteem on the kingdom. You're going to place high esteem on the causes of Christ. You're going to place great consideration. You're going to pay homage to, amen. You know, the word honor it's like unto um, where we say in America, I pledge allegiance to. Amen. We need to pledge allegiance to the kingdom of God. Amen. I love America, but I love the kingdom of God more. I love the king and his kingdom. The king of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. And see, we have to come to a place that we're going to honor God. Because see, if you don't honor God, things are not going to work as well as you thought they would. Hello, somebody. And I have scripture to back that up. I said I have scripture to back that up because the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall what? be added unto you when you don't honor the kingdom of God when you don't seek it when you don't strive after and aim after and move in it and be faithful toward the kingdom of God all these other things that you desire are not going to be added see when you honor the kingdom of God and you honor the causes of the kingdom of God what happens is is that you find yourself moving in a success, successful direction. In a successful direction. How many know success comes from God? Yes, the diligent hand shall bear rule. Yes, amen. I said the diligent hand shall bear rule. But the Bible says no man can receive anything good unless it comes from heaven. Come on, somebody. I've read this poem a couple of weeks ago about honoring, honoring God. It goes this way. If I set my heart on honoring God, 
I will remain pure no matter how strong the temptation if I set my heart on honoring God I will forgive no matter how justified my bitterness is if I set my heart on honoring God I will remain patient no matter how intolerant I may feel I will speak of my Lord no matter how uncomfortable it is I will remain faithful no matter how persistent the trial if I set my heart on honoring God I will remain confident no matter how hopeless the situation if I set my heart on honoring God I will remain loyal no matter how easy it is to defect if I set my heart on honoring God I will pray often no matter how busy life becomes if I set my heart on honoring God I will love unconditionally if I set my heart on honoring the kingdom of God no matter how the situation is I will stay faithful if, if I set my heart on honoring the kingdom of God I will persevere no matter how easy it is to quit if I set my heart on honoring the kingdom of God I will trust the Lord no matter how illogical he seems if I set my heart on honoring the kingdom of God I will spend time in God's word no matter how tired I may be if I set my heart on honoring the kingdom of God I will accept God's will no matter how burdensome it is if I set my heart on honoring the kingdom of God I will reach out to others no matter how introverted I am if I set my heart on honoring the kingdom of God I will sing God's praises no matter how well I may sing if I set my heart on honoring God I will keep focus on the answer no matter how difficult the question if I set my heart on honoring the kingdom of God I will worship the Lord no matter how gloomy the situation if I set my heart on honoring God I will trust God's direction no matter how rocky the journey if I set my heart on honoring the kingdom of God I will accept God's choice no matter how much I disagree if I set my heart on honoring the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Come on, that's a good place to clap. Amen. Hallelujah. See, we have to come to a place where we set. Set. So I'm going to say set. Set. When you're setting something, you're placing that thing in a spot. Amen. Where you you're fastening that thing into a situation. You're fastening that thing into a holding place. And you have to set your heart. Uh, the psalmist said, my heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. And we have to fix our heart on honoring the kingdom of God. Fix our heart that well, we, we, we're receiving God's rule. We're receiving God's reign. Amen. See, the kingdom of God is the message of the Bible especially in the New Testament. And as I stated, the word kingdom is used 150 times in the New Testament. See, Jesus, the son of the living God, he made the kingdom of God his central emphasis. And we have to move in the same direction. It was the heart of his message. Hello, somebody. If Jesus made the kingdom of God the center of his message, then the greatest need of man is to rediscover what the kingdom of God is, find out how the kingdom of God functions, amen, how uh, the citizens of God should live within the government of the kingdom of God. See, the government of the kingdom of God is for you. I can't say that about all governments. Hello, somebody. But the government of the kingdom of God is for you. Amen. There's healing in the kingdom of God. There's healing. There's deliverance. There's provision. Whatever you need is provided within the government of the kingdom of God. And so we ought to love the things of God, love the causes of God. 